been a year since Deanna Limberhan was found in the Stillwater River, and the family is still looking for answers. We'll tell you more coming up. Plus, dealing with unimaginable tragedy. She was a great, a beautiful role model. I mean, I, I told her she was, she was an angel on earth. The multi-vehicle crash in Harden has left many families hurting, including one that lost three members. And brightening up Magic City streets. I'm super excited for the community to have something to be proud of and to hopefully implement some public safety, slow people down a little as they go through these intersections. Billings becomes only the 26th city in the nation to implement asphalt art. The MTA News starts right now. Good evening, now. everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. Our top story tonight, we now know the names of all six people who were killed in Friday's multi-car pileup near Hardin. The Bighorn County Sheriff's Office confirmed that four of the victims were riding in the same vehicle with three of those being from the same family. They were 72-year-old Georgia Walks of Hardin, 22-year-old Shiley Walks, and two children, 11-year-old Michelle Walks and three-year-old Merrick Champ. Funeral services for all three members of the Walks family are set for 10 a.m. tomorrow in Crow Agency, while Champ's funeral is on Friday in Crow Agency. 47-year-old Chad Fox of St. Xavier also died in the crash, as did 60-year-old Eric Love. Love was the founder of Crosscut Mountain Sports Center, a Bozeman area recreational facility. The news is especially hard for the family who lost several loved ones as they try to come to grips with this tragedy. Our Casey Conlon has more. The Walks family is dealing with an unimaginable tragedy after losing several members, but it's also been tough for the Pretty Eagle Catholic Academy here in St. Xavier, which has seen generations of walks come through, including 11 year old Vichelle, who would have been a sixth grader in the fall. Her principal says the school has lost one of its favorite students. Vichelle was one of the kindest people I've ever come across. I mean, even even on her bad days, she was still trying to bring somebody else up. Both of Vichelle's parents attended Pretty Eagle as well. This was her fifth grade classroom last year, now hauntingly empty. It wasn't Monday as the school welcomed classmates to come and grieve. Share stories of her and remember her and just letting the kids know that God has a plan and this is part of it. Even, even though we might not be able to understand it right now, um, it's part of his plan and we just need to trust that. The school is also planning its own memorial service when classes start again in a spirit garden in the school's courtyard. It's unfortunately something they've done before. We've already had one student that we've lost in the past and we've kind of had a, a special place, I guess, for, for their memory, to honor their memory. Michelle's funeral will be at the same time as her great-grandmother Georgia and Auntie Shiley. It's how they would have wanted it. They're like the Bobsy twins. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, they just did everything with their grandmother. They were so close. And I mean, going powwows together. Um, yeah, they were very, very close-knit. In life and in death. In St. Xavier, Casey Conlon, MTN News. Tonight, the family of Deanna Limberhand remembers her on the one-year anniversary of her death. The lame deer woman's body was found in the Stillwater River. The family believes she was murdered, but no suspect has been publicly identified. Arlena Howder spoke with law enforcement and Limberhand's family today as they continue to fight for justice. It's been one year since the body of Lame Deer resident Deanna Limberhand was found in the Stillwater River near Absorki, and the family still has no answers as to what happened to her. The family held a memorial Wednesday, and they're hoping Deanna won't be forgotten by law enforcement. It's been one long, hard year for all of us. Darlene Limberhand has been dreaming of justice for her daughter Deanna since the day she vanished. I talked to her the day before, and she... She's, she just told me I'm coming home to take care of my baby and that was it, you know, she was gone. Limberhand disappeared after traveling to Absorki. Her family says her body was found hogtied in the Stillwater River. Though Deanna's cause of death is listed as drowning, the family believes there's much more to the case. She was badly beaten. Friends and family rallied outside the Stillwater County Courthouse back in March on what would have been Deanna's 40th birthday, frustrated that an autopsy report has never been released. And few leads have surfaced in the months since. It's just 
almost like forgotten. MTN reached out to the Stillwater County Sheriff's Office Wednesday and received this statement saying, quote, it is still open and classified as a suspicious death primarily because there was no witnesses that saw her go into the river. There is no new information at this time. The family is frustrated, not only with the lack of answers, but with what they say is a lack of communication. I wish they would, um, you know, inform us, I mean, or just give us a call and say, we're still working on this case, or just let us know, you know, what's going on. Sovereign bodies came with us to see if they could get a statement or any kind of reports or anything, but because it's still under investigation, we haven't been able to get anything. And so for now, all the family can do is hope for answers while they remember Deanna. They held this memorial Wednesday afternoon, not just for her, but for the hundreds of other missing and murdered indigenous people. The um, MMIW and MMIP, it's getting to be uh, quite larger than than it has originally been. More, more missing and more murdered. But until her murderer is found, that may be difficult to find. They just want someone to come forward with answers. In Lame Deer, Alina Howder, MTN News. Three people are dead, including an 18 month old child after they were shot right outside of Glacier National Park. The Glacier County Sheriff says it all began when 37 year old Derek Madden of Oklahoma deliberately drove his vehicle into a group of people who were walking beside the road in East Glacier. He then crashed into a tree and reportedly left the vehicle and began shooting at a family with a shotgun. Madden allegedly shot and killed 39 year old David Sayo, then continued firing on 40 year old Christy Sayo as she held her 18 month old daughter Mackenzie. All three were from New York. After running out of ammunition, authorities say Madden then attacked 30 year old Christina Sayo with a knife, but she fought back and killed Madden. Christy Sayo, Christina Sayo, and Mackenzie were taken to a hospital where the toddler was later pronounced dead. The sheriff says Madden had been in a prior relationship with Christina and suffered from mental health issues. Well, you might soon see and smell more smoke in our air, but most of it isn't coming from Montana. It's mainly from the Moose Fire in Idaho, just south of the Montana state line. That wildfire has now burned more than 16,500 acres, with more than 370 personnel fighting the flames. That fire grew more than 4,000 acres overnight. Yes, the three main factors for wildfires, if you folks remember, are the heat, dry, and windy conditions. Now, winds aren't going to be too much of an issue, but we are going to continue to see those hot and dry conditions as we move forward here. Here are some weekly trends across some areas, across the viewing area. Take a look at that. Tomorrow and Friday are going to be remaining hot days. Bit of a cooler day for Saturday as we are going to see a cold front push through. So, folks, just be cautious again with these hot and dry conditions. Try not to create any sparks. Along with that, the heat. It's good to keep in mind some cool techniques. Make sure you are drinking plenty of water. Use fans and AC when you can and make sure to wear light and loose clothing. All right, folks, stick around while we'll those full forecast details and the rest of your seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. Now an update to a story we first brought you last night. A Billings woman with cerebral palsy now has a new tricycle after her bike was stolen this past week. And it's all thanks to you, our Q2 viewers. As we reported, Mikey Little's tricycle was her only means of independently getting around town. And it was taken from her front yard at well, after our story aired last night, we were inundated with emails and phone calls from people offering to replace Mikey's bike. And less than 24 hours later, she has a new one. Denise Bestie Hellickson donated the replacement. Mikey's close friend says they're overwhelmed by the support and generosity of people willing to help. An interesting art project is happening here in the streets of Billings. You heard that right. The actual streets surrounding North Park are in the process of getting a beautiful upgrade. It's amazing what you can do with a brush, a can of paint, and a little creativity. The design starts at 6th Avenue um, with larger shapes and they get smaller and smaller as it nears the entrance to the park at 7th Avenue. And this is my interpretation of Billings as a trailhead. Three artists are working on different yet cohesive art projects this week on the streets surrounding North Park transforming ordinary asphalt into something extraordinary. Jody Leitner and Elisa Linegar are two of the artists who started their pieces on Tuesday. Leitner is working on a project covering the whole street. I love big projects, 
So this is the biggest project that I've done. While just down the road, Linegar is creating art on the corners. They will feature all like the native species that were once here, like bison, elk, deer, um, eagle, bears, and some distant mountains, and then the warm sunrises that inspire feelings of happiness, confidence, tolerance, and um, all the feel-good colors. Billings was one of just 26 cities nationwide that was selected to receive a $25,000 grant from Bloomberg Philanthropies for the project. A project that's not just beautiful, it's practical. The designs are to slow traffic, make it more pedestrian friendly, and create environments that people can use more often. But then these corner intersections also create friction. They slow traffic down by, by making the road feel smaller, um, even though it's technically not. All of the street paintings around North Park should be finished by August 5th to be featured in the Billings Art Walk. A short turnaround, but there's high hopes the paintings will last for years. This street is being renovated in three years, so um, the painting hopefully or aspects of it will last for three years. Um, but you know, I am just pleased for it to last as long as it does, and we'll see see what happens. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Well, still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, a Billings billiards player, still one of the best at the game, even as he nears 100. We'll meet him and hear which NFL star he's being compared to. Then in sports, a 16-year-old Livingston golfer, already one of the best in Montana, is about to take her skills national. Alec catches up with our Athlete of the Week in just a bit. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.